Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be recapping this PlayStation debugging console. But before we do that, let's go ahead and try the game because someone in the comments in our previous video, which you can see over here, requested we try it out. So we're gonna try out a PAL based game or a PAL region game and watch that screen. So you better plug in the controller that way the game doesn't complain. Licensed by Sony Computer Entertainment Europe. There we have it. It's however displaying in black and white and that's just because of the incompatibility of the video modes. All right, that's enough of that. So let's get down to business. Let's commence the suffering. We're gonna go ahead and recap this console and it's probably not gonna be that fun because it has so many capacitors inside of it. It being a PU8 board, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and do a double check. Set our screws way over there. Of course, we gotta remove the game first. And yes, the board inside is a PU8, so it's gonna be quite the travesty when it comes to recapping this console. That's because it's gonna be a lot of caps. So at this time, I'm only gonna perform a recapping of the motherboard and not the power supply. You can lift this thing up with just a little bit of force by pulling, or you can use tweezers to aid in the removal of this cable. This other one doesn't really need any help. And this power cable is pretty much the same way. Now we can safely remove this laser. And now we have a bunch of screws to remove. It's like this one is being mean. So we do have shorter screws right along here. You'll of course want to keep those separated. And I imagine the recapping process will go pretty much the same with any PU8 that you encounter. Let's remove this shielding. And that looks to be all of the screws so we can safely lift up this metal shroud. The area that's gonna be horrifically bad to recap is gonna be this area along with this area. Look at all these capacitors, there are a ton of them. Who would wanna put themselves through all of this suffering? We removed the two screws that were for this parallel port, which of course was only used for nefarious purposes back in the day. So I noticed in our previous video, we didn't take a look over the backside of this motherboard. So we're gonna do that now as a special added bonus for people that wanna suffer through a capacitor replacement video. Let's go ahead and show you some microscope footage. So there's your parallel port IO area. Nothing too extravagant or anything really too exciting to write home about. Quite a bit of resistor arrays. Do you have a console in need of repair or modification? Do you not have a console? Don't fret, we offer repairs and upgrades as well as refurbished ones. For more information, fill out the contact form on our website, nixelectronics.com. Yeah, the top side of this board is definitely a little bit more eventful than this bottom side. All right, now to begin the fun part. Before we can even begin the recapping process, we have to first make sure that we have the capacitors we need. So we have here in our possession, a capacitor kit for the PU8 motherboards from console five. Can't really go wrong with our capacitor kits. However, is it compatible with this particular revision board? We know it works for the consumer PlayStations, but what about the ones that were sent out to the developers? This debugging console. Let's go ahead and open up the bag and make sure we have what we need. We'll use that with our trusty friend, the X-Acto blade, safest tool you can use. I'm hoping that we don't have all the capacitors we need. That way I don't have to suffer through this video. Don't think luck's gonna be with me though. I kinda already have a feeling that most of the capacitors are here. So let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna require six 224 volt capacitors right here. Looks like we've been provided with nine of these things for some reason. 
So we do have the two 20s that we need. We actually apparently have extras. I'm assuming the consumer public version of this console might have had these populated, but I don't have another PU8 to compare against at this time. I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and begin by removing these two 20s, seeing as how we know we for sure have the replacements we need. We'll go ahead and do that the dangerous way. We all know how irreplaceable this console is, so we'll definitely try and do our best to be careful, but there are no guarantees, of course. The goal is to not rip any of these pads for the entirety of this board. So we'll see if we can meet that goal. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna kinda just blast through all the capacitors. I'm not gonna name out the voltages or anything like that. We're gonna kinda just go through it with the minimal speaking as possible unless something eventful happens because this is gonna be a real long section. So we're gonna turn on our vacuum and let's get started. And for inquiring minds, we're of course gonna be using the Hako FX-951 soldering iron, which is unfortunately discontinued by Hako. And I'm gonna be using the T15T something soldering iron tip. We'll probably also swap over to the boot soldering iron tip at some point in time. For now, let's just go ahead and start cleaning up these pads. I mean, Sony has already saved us the trouble of using leaded solder. So we've had a couple of experts show me the dark arts of replacing capacitors. And essentially what's done is you add solder to one pad. I find it's easier for me to do that, but to also do that on the more difficult side where you have less space, like right over here. And of course, pretty much like right over here. And now we can place our capacitors. That's gonna be a difficult spot to solder in the future. It's so cramped in there. Let's make sure the joints are good on these before we progress any further. I like to just add a little bit of uh, additional solder. And you can kind of wiggle the capacitors, just don't apply too much force or you will tear some pads. So those two are good. Thankfully we don't have anything to solder on that side, but we will on this side. All right, and that should be enough to anchor those in. Go ahead and add some solder to the other sides before we progress. Now I do have some specialized soldering iron tools just for capacitor replacement and installation. However, those tools do make the job take just a tad bit longer and so I'm not gonna be using those today. All right, let's go ahead and make sure these are secure. Make sure the joints are nice before we progress any further. Get that little solder shard out of there. All right, so this section is done. Make sure our polarity is correct, which it looks like it is. And I believe we have one more 220 capacitor to replace, which is at the bottom in the laser area.
soldering iron is very hot. Alright, and that looks like it's securely on there. So that's all the 220s. Just now we can do the 4725s, which in this case is the 4716s from what I can tell. See how we're gonna do this, huh? Yes, we're finally gonna have to use a different soldering iron tip. Um, maybe we won't try the boot one, but we'll try out the T15 BC1. If that doesn't work out for us, then we'll swap over to the boot. Try from this side. All right, that side is in there. Let's get this other side. Too much solder. All right, it looks like we're secured. Let's get this little solder shard out of here. There we go. That was definitely a tough one to install. Looks like we lowered the resale value right here. All right, and we have one last one over here. And that one went on there with no effort. And it is securely on there, just like the other one and the other one. That's all our 47s. And we do have a tremendous amount of the 1016s, 22 six volts, and of course this travesty over here. So at this point in time, I think you have an idea of what we're gonna be doing, and there's no need to bore you with soldering 50 more capacitors. So we'll return once we finish the recapping process to make sure the console still functions. All right, it looks like we have one final capacitor left. This is 1016 right here, which has now been removed. I am pleased to report I did not tear any traces. Of course, you'll never know if I'm telling the truth or not because I didn't record the majority of this section, but I assure you we did not. I did encounter a couple of leaky capacitors because, well, they all have that telltale fishy smell. And of course, all of the leaky capacitors were in the laser assembly area, which I'll show you in a moment. First, let's finish attaching this final capacitor here. I guess we'll get it from this area since this area is like the most cramped. And you may be wondering why this capacitor is of different color and probably manufacturer than what was provided by console five? Well, 
there may have been some kind of a miscount or maybe this particular version of the console does not have or required more capacitors than what's in the kit. So I had to go ahead and find one of these capacitors to place here because we just did not have it. So that's the final one. Go ahead and mark it with our marker that we replaced it. And now if you take a look at this particular view right here, you'll see that all of the capacitors have a marking of the Sharpie for being replaced. Now I don't usually do that, but when you're dealing with this many capacitors, you definitely want to do it. That way you can keep track of what you've replaced. And I'm also unfortunately going to have to report that I did end up having to use some Kingbo Flux. Yeah. So let's go ahead and see if this thing still powers up, huh? I'm just going to power this thing up with the bare minimum. Because we want to make sure that games are able to be played on this thing. Perfect. Get our soldering equipment out of the way. I was mentioning that the laser assembly area had a couple of capacitors that were leaking and it was these right here. And it was specifically the, uh, the smaller ones, the 10 microfarad 16 volts, and there were some 22 microfarad something something volts that were also here leaking, just because of the telltale fishy smell. So here are the capacitors that were replaced, so you can definitely tell I replaced quite a bit of them. I don't know the exact count on this, but I think it was something like 30 or 40 of them, who knows, maybe 25. Kind of hard to tell just from looking at this tiny pile. Anyway, let's go ahead and power this console on and see what happens. All right, so we're powering it on. TV is on. Well, we're still getting picture over here and we have sound, so clearly it's still working. At least through the multi AV out thingy, my jig. Of course, we did get sound and we do have picture. We gotta try it out with the game though. So we'll go ahead and try it out with the one that we were using previously. And let's go ahead and hold this down. Yep, licensed by Sony Computer Entertainment Europe. And of course the picture is still displaying in black and white and looks kind of offset because of the fact that this game is not for this region TV. So it's not gonna display in the proper video output. Well, that's good enough for me. So I replaced all the capacitors on the motherboard. I'd say it was probably like a two hour ordeal. And it's mostly the time you have to take because the capacitors are in such a confined space. So you have to be very meticulous. And of course you don't want to have any bridging. So hopefully no one ever sends me one of these PlayStations to work on because it's not going to be fun and it's not going to be cheap. Well, as you've just seen, the PlayStation works just fine. So I'd say we had a successful capacitor replacement on the motherboard for this PlayStation debugging console. It is the PU8, right? Yep, PU-8. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.